match that pose. to my unboxing laboratory. Right, right. Well, I, I wasn't well. Chris saw this um, very kindly. Go, go subscribe to Yuri Game, don't you? And <laughs> That's the true reason. I wasn't well, so he bought me this, and it is official Gamescom <laughs> fidget spinner. Let's get into it. None yes. of this is getting the fidget spinner on the box. Come on. No, no, no. Are you like that? It's official because it suggests that there are unofficial Gamescom yeah, brand names. Don't buy the unofficial ones. <laughs> it's waiting. out of the box. Wow, hang on, that was quick. I was, my camera was on Andy, but it unboxed. It's gone. The magic's happened. There it is. Um, whoa. Does it work? Give it the first spin. Saleable. It still spins out of the box, you don't even need to no. you don't even need to take it out. So if you're worried about safety, maybe just keep it in the box. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how many can I pick it out for? Um a hundred. You know, you know they were nine euros. Yeah. Nine euros. Nine euros. That's what two. They saw you coming. Best 18 euros you ever spent. Hello, welcome to Unboxford, the unboxing oh, stop laboratory.
fantastic quote. I see, as uh, written of as written of Tolkien. by Tolkien so himself. This belonged to this barrel door. Yes, barrel door. Oh, we just we go. We're going to make up some Silmarillion. Is that what we're doing? <laughs> real. This <laughs> was real. This is real. You should know that the Silmarillion is real. It's a real book, and it's Sorry. Silmarillion. The Kalimbrimbor, uh, known to some as Kalimbrim Lim 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 Look at that. It's nice though, isn't it? It's got some elvish scripts on it. Oh. Now, although I am a big Lord of the Rings fan, I'm not enough of a fan to tell you if this is the script that's on the One Ring or maybe if it's a different ring of power, I but I would be very interested to know. It's nice, isn't it? I think it's the one from the game, because that would make sense. That would make sense, but like, I'm not sure that... Uh, it would be kind of cool if it was the ring of power, although the ring of power is gold, and this is like... I mean, it's not silver, it's tin or something. But it's, yeah. you know, so as you know, the story of the ring of power, um, uh, Kello Campbell went to yeah. uh, went to Sauron's birthday party. Yes, and he did. Yeah. Despite the invitation saying no gifts, he got there and he saw there was a table full of presents. And he was like, go and present. That is Sauron. That is Sauron. That is great. So we're summoning, referring now from the third appendix. Yeah. Summoning the Clap, Ellen. Whoa, that was a good one. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, show of the weekend is a little bit different this week. We're on the floor. We're on the floor at Gamescom. There's no sofa. We've not got the budget to bring the sofa over to Germany. We wanted a purple sofa. Everything's purple here. We went with it. But... We gave a really good business pitch. Yeah. We thought just strap the sofa to the plane, get some guy ropes, but no. So have you enjoyed your Gamescom experience, Ellen? I have. I have. I have got to play lots of games. I was a little bit unwell for one of the, one of the days, but then I perked up. It was all good, and I got straight back into playing Dishonored Death of the Outsider. Is that your favourite thing that you've seen? I think it is. I mean, last year, um, I remember seeing Dishonored 2 here at Gamescom and being like, ooh, so mm. <laughs> I was really excited about it. It's a thing of, it's more dishonoured, it's more of the same, but different. And I think Arcane are very good at like, coming up with something that's a bit of a twist. So it's mechanics that you're totally used to, but with a really fresh perspective on it. And I'm really excited to see Billy Lurk's story. One thing though I am worried about is I don't want to hurt the outsider, because I really like the outsider, and it's called death of the outsider yeah that so. suggests to me that he's not going to come out of it clean i mean dishonored normally gives you a choice yes but it'll be like it's always a bad choice so it'll be like do you want to kill the outsider or do you want to like just leave him alive but with no skin or something like that yeah but the, because the thing is is it might be that the good option is that maybe he wants to go to maybe death. it's the death of his past self and the birth of his new self as a pop star as a mm, no <laughs> I mean, I'm getting yeah 
Yep. Ellen signed an NDA, so she can't confirm, but that definitely <laughs> is what happens in the end. But look I in mean, her eye. Look in her eyes. I, it's what happens in the I end. Buy the album. Let's. <laughs> yeah, Ellen's already. The poster's up on the wall already. Yeah. I would recommend before it comes out in September. It's really close now, actually. Before it comes out. Uh, go play the Dishonored 1 DLC if you haven't already. You don't need to, but it'll give you a bit more... Of an Vital extra. context. Yes, context. That's what I want. Extra, extra context. It just adds a little extra layer to it. And it's, mm, it's it's just... Mwah. Mwah. The extra, the mwah. perfect spice mwah. that finishes the soup. <laughs> Guys, it's been a it's long spice. week. I don't know <laughs> what my brain is doing at the moment. Um, also, yeah, uh, I, I did like... Someone commented on the Dishonored video I made that they hoped that the if you listen to Rats, you can hear one uh, talking about wanting to be a chef in Paris. And I thought, that's really cute. Uh, <laughs> They're yeah. all Ratatouille reference. That would be so good. It's a little Pat Noswalt rat. It's being made in France, so... Maybe. So it's definitely going to happen. <laughs> Again, Ellen signed the NDA, so she can't. But I'm here to translate. Let me look in the eyes. Yeah, it's got Ratatouille right in it. <laughs> well, what has your favourite game been this week? Uh, tricky one. Uh, I really, really enjoyed playing Shadow of War. Mm. I know there have been a lot of opportunities to uh, play it before, but it was the first time I've got my hands on it, and I have to say I was really, really impressed. I enjoyed Shadow of Mordor, mm. but I didn't actually finish it. It seems like there's just a lot more stuff in the world, so yeah. the combat's as satisfying as it was, and it was really, really fun before in the last game, but now, it just felt that in the time we were playing it, there was a lot more random stuff happening, yeah. a lot more random chance, yeah. like, just things going unexpectedly wrong, <laughs> and, and Un- Unexpectedly, Luke. Un- unexpected, is it? <laughs> there may have been a few things I could have done to mitigate... <laughs> Letting that, it, letting the caragor out of the cage. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's no, not no, fair no. to keep this beast caged. You're welcome, my friend. How do you enjoy? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it. Ungrateful. <laughs> Jeff, though. Jeff. Lovely Jeff. Lovely Jeff. It, it seems in the if you watch the let's play, like Jeff dies. Yeah. But uh, he doesn't. He went on a, uh, to a farm. Yeah. To a caragor farm. Yeah. With um, you know where Frodo goes in the end. Yeah, you know where Frodo goes to the Grey Havens. In, like an Orcish equivalent. There's a boat in the lava, and it carries them along a lava river to paradise, and they to, all go to the same place. It's fine. To an orc equivalent of Grey Havens. It's yeah. the same as the uh, the Elvish Grey Havens, and the elves are surprised and dismayed when they get there to find that it's full of orcs. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I really, really enjoyed Shadow of War. That was fun. It was cool yeah. seeing the Balrog. I got to like nerd out about Tolkien stuff a bit. I tried to tell Ellen the exciting backstory <laughs> behind the Balrogs. Yeah. You were interested, weren't you, Ellen? <laughs> look at the, look at that face. Look at that interested face. We played some Sea of Thieves today. Yes, I was today. really excited for you to play it because it wasn't my first time playing it, but it was Luke's first time playing it, and we all know he likes boats. I so. do love boats. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I found it very satisfying. It has that great online multiplayer thing that we're seeing a lot more of now where you can only control a small part of the game if you know what I mean yeah. so so I was steering the ship but when you're steering the ship you can't really see the sails and if you're looking at the sails you can't, so you rely a lot on communication yeah. and the headset chat uh, but that was really fun I love the look of it it feels really good to control I like how when you get drunk on grog the controls go all squiffy um, and I fell in the sea and Captain Andy sailed the ship away without me <laughs> because I don't know so there was another boat and he felt that they were in danger yeah. or something. I kind of raised the anchor, thinking that Luke was on the ship. And I, w- I could not have been clearer. <laughs> Guys, I am not on the boat. I'm oh, not no, on the ship. Like, Don't um, sail away without me, I believe um, were my words. <laughs> I'd already raised the anchor by that point. Hey, I couldn't and hear. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, we'll just get prepped. We won't go. But, well, I don't blame you, Andy. The fault always lies at the captain's door. You don't blame me, Andy? I don't blame you, Ellen. The fault always lies <laughs> with the captain of the ship. It's been a long week. <laughs> Andy is ultimately to blame because he was yeah. the captain. He's yes. the skipper. He assumes ultimate responsibility. It is him that will be court-martialed. <laughs> uh, I know it's a pirate thing, so they probably don't have court-martials, but there's probably like an informal one with palm trees. Yeah. 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 Anyway, as long as there's some legal proceeding, I'll be satisfied. Yeah, yeah with some skellies. Some skellies, yeah. I shot a skelly in the face. I had a banana and I looked for the banana but I couldn't find it. It's good it's good Gamescom story, Helen. Exclusive. <laughs> like like <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> oh I played uh, Monster Hunter World. Oh yeah 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 yeah. You and Andy are both like super excited about it. 
tell us about it. It's exactly what it sounds like and looks like. You hunt monsters. I've played a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of Monster Hunter before. I was not expecting the depth and complexity that I got. I was sort of maybe a little bit overly optimistic about being able to just pick up the controller and run in and smash up a T-Rex. Um, <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't really go down like that. It's really, really deep. There's a lot of menus. There's a lot of kit. I was just looking at all of these ever-expanding menus within menus within options and thinking, okay, I'm, it's going to take me a lot of hours to get my head around this, but I'm willing to put in the time. Yeah. I felt a bit mean, but when you're hunting the monsters, the monsters are sort of like... The ones that I hunted, at least, when I found them, they were just, like, asleep in a cave. Mm -hmm. And then I went and, like, shot them. And then they panicked, and then they fought me for a bit. And then when they were, like, weakened enough, they started limping, and they limped away, and they tried to hide. And then it's up to you to chase them, even though they're limping, and find them where they're hiding and kill them in the cave. So I didn't feel great. <laughs> I kind of did the opposite in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> oh, oh you're, you're, you're good. You're blocking. Ow, ow, ow. You're blocking. That's good. There's a third one getting oh, in the mix. God. That video is going up soon, people. And you will see. You will see. You will see. Um, You'll see what we mean. Let's put it that way. You, you saw me fighting a load of crocodiles. And some other things happened as well. And I upset Luke. So look forward to that. Absolute. The absolute state of, of this. <laughs> Uh, there was Star Wars Battlefront yeah. 2. Obviously, we've seen a lot of that before, but yeah, this was maybe. space combat. Space! space. I Spice! <laughs> the one place that hasn't been corrupted, corrupted by, by capitalism. capitalism. <laughs> I really enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. I actually enjoyed it a lot more than the on-the-ground stuff ah. because I find just the dogfighting mechanic, like chasing a screaming around space, uh, chasing a TIE fighter and like getting your sights on it, really, really satisfying. Really, really fun. And, like, and especially like when you are like in a proper dogfight and you get one of them and they explode like having from the previous Battlefront game it is really satisfying being like yes I took someone out of, out of the, the sky space I also played uh, Call of Duty yes. World War 2 now I'm not a huge Call of Duty fan particularly um, no. but I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I did and that was because that was down to the war mode you might think they're all war mode yeah. there's <laughs> no like there's no like picnic mode or anything no. War mode, it sees you take a number of objectives in sequence. So first you have to take this house and then you have to build a bridge and then you have to escort a, a, a tank through through some streets while the other team is obviously trying to stop you from, from doing that. And that was really fun. It had a little bit more of a, uh, we say this all the time, play the objective yeah. kind of feeling so I was able to from quite far back provide covering fire <laughs> just shooting over the heads of my own team and yeah I, I, but feeling like sniper I was sniper luigi -ing it sniper oh man not I wasn't <laughs> sniper luigi good but sniper luigi would look at me and be like huh, I remember my first tour <laughs> this glazed expression I don't know how much I'm going to play it when it comes out but I did find it more fun than I than I thought yeah. which is pretty cool one other thing that I played was uh, the crew 2 crew 2 the streets the streets and I, I turned oh, it's not I turned it from a car into a plane into a boat and it was cool uh, we did some dirt bike racing a bit of formula one racing a bit of drifting i was terrible at the drifting it, these events usually have like a dev person standing next to you kind of like explaining what to do because you're just like thrown into the game and you don't know the controls so you have to very quickly learn it looking over your shoulder yeah. partially judging yeah he was very nice he was like yeah you're doing it <laughs> yeah you're playing it I was like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> You're playing the game. Well done. Yeah. He was really nice. He wasn't patronising at all, but I was just like, I'm not doing that well. I don't. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, there's a like, camera mode that you can play around with. You can see all the cool tricks. So if you do something particularly cool, and it's got like a graph showing you. So if it, if you do something cool, it goes up. So you go along the timeline and it's like, you did something cool here because I went under a bridge or whatever, you know. So it's quite cool. It, it it's really nice. Helps you. I like that the game sort of knows when you're doing something cool. <laughs> that suggests that it also knows when you're doing something deeply uncool. It was just like, flat, flat, flat. Ooh! Yeah. Ooh! The game's just like a judgy friend, just like, no, no. no. Oh, oh, yeah, bridge, so yeah, no. nice. No. Had it, lost it. Yeah, just been playing lots of really cool games here yeah. at Gamescom. That's at Gamescom. Gamescom, because there's games. And a com. I don't know what the com means. It should be con, surely. I don't know. Who knows? Literally no one knows. <laughs> so there's been a little taste of what we've been playing at yeah. Gamescom. Yeah. Ellen, how many Gamescoms out of a possible seven Gamescoms would you give this Gamescom? I, I would give it... 
six games comms. It's pretty it's good. good. It's good. It's pretty it's good, good, good score, yeah. considering you were pretty unwell was, for... Yeah, I was very unwell. That's what the knocked off bit... That's what knocked that, off a games comm. That wasn't the games comms fault, so, you know, that's why it's only one, so... Well, like the Sea of Thieves abandonment of me, <laughs> the fault must lie with the captain, and the captain was Gamescom, so it deserves to lose a point. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, looking forward to getting back to the UK yes. and back to regular broadcast service. Yes. And, but thank you for watching. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. Um, and uh, we've been putting uh, all of these videos have been going up, uh, lots of Let's Plays. If you want to go and have a look, go and have a look at our channel and watch them all, yeah? Like, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. See you later. Bye. Bye.